I was just introduced to this sub a few days ago. I have a few stories that I would like to share with you guys, but I'll start with the one that happened about three and a half years ago. Name has been changed and I'm on mobile, so sorry if formatting is wonky. I was in the second trimester of my pregnancy and my husband Tom and I were on a 2 a.m. craving trip to Walmart. When we got there, everything seemed normal. My husband walked over to the movie section while I rushed to get my snack. Pringles and chocolate pudding. As I was walking down the chip aisle, a man walked up to me. He was in his mid to late thirties, tall, and wore a leather jacket. He looked me up and down and, with an almost sinister smile, asked how far along I was. I was cranky, hormonal, and slightly creeped out, so I told him it was rude to assume a woman was pregnant because of the size of her stomach. Also, my pregnancy was none of his business. I shouldn't have done that. He seemed annoyed and walked away. I grabbed my things and went to meet up with Tom. The man kept showing up and just stared at me from the end of each aisle. I started to feel really uneasy and whispered about the man to Tom. He brushed it off and said, mm, I'm sure he's just mad that you called him out. We went to check out and I looked around. The man was in the next lane over with a single pack of gum. We walked outside and loaded into the car. I noticed the man stepping into a big red truck about two rows down. Tom started the car and we headed home. The truck wasn't far behind. I told Tom I thought he was following us and saw he looked like he was concentrating very hard. Without warning, he made a hard left. The truck followed. Hard right. The truck was still behind us. I started to freak out. We kept driving in zigzags and the truck following each time. Finally, my husband pulled into a gas station. The truck pulled in and was put into park. He started to get out of the truck. We waited until he was walking up to my window. He was about five feet away when Tom suddenly took off. We went down several roads to make sure we lost the guy and finally went home. I was so thankful to Tom for keeping a clear head and coming up with a good plan to get me away from that creep. He's my hero. To the creepy truck guy, let's not meet again. Ever. I've been reading and listening to a lot of creepy stories lately. I suddenly realized past a few friends and family. I really haven't told many people this story, so here it goes. When I was 10 or 12, I can't really remember what age, I had a very disturbing encounter with a plain white van. To preface this a little better, I lived on the outskirts of a small town in Texas. Now I live in town. Uh, my only friend that lived anywhere near me was a childhood friend who had since moved. However, I had developed a friendship with her aunt, a substitute teacher that worked at my school. It was not uncommon for me to visit her aunt, about a mile and a half up a major highway. It's a state highway running north to south with a lot of traffic. I would occasionally, on a whim, go out and bike. I have always been overweight, so exercise was unusual. While biking to her house one day, I noticed a van behind me get on the shoulder with their blinker on behind me. 
as if to turn down her road, as it was the only one for a good quarter mile on the right. Noticing that there was a few more houses down the road, I didn't think anything of it. It followed me up to the road as I turned down it, but instead of turning, however, it parked perpendicular to the road, as if blocking it. Feeling something was wrong, I hastened to her door, her trailer being the first house and in plain view of the road. Eyeing the van, I ran to her front door and began knocking. The van sat there unmoving with tinted windows. I knocked again, constantly looking between the door and the van. A good minute or two had passed, and I had begun knocking very loudly, banging in desperation. She had to be home. Her car was there. I looked over at the van and began to see the passenger side door facing me slowly begin to open. At that exact moment, my friend's aunt opened the door and asks me what's wrong. Before explaining anything, I glanced back at the van. The door that was opening slammed shut and the van took off. After explaining everything and taking a moment to calm down, she took me and my bike home. I explained the entire thing to my grandmother, who was more than a little worried. I never saw that exact same van again. Since that day, I still feel very uncomfortable around unmarked white vans, and am wary of any car that looks as if it may be tailing me. I can never be sure of their intentions, but to this day, I feel like I narrowly avoided being kidnapped. I don't know if this would fit the description of being watched, but in my opinion it does. When I was younger, I used to live in an apartment complex in a really bad part of town. My parents used to let me play in front of our door as long as somebody was watching, which was usually my mom. Things were fine until a year later. A young man, who my parents thought was a shady character, would frequent the apartments to hang out with a few of his buddies to drink and do drugs, particularly heroin. While he would be waiting for them, I'd be outside playing, unaware of him just standing there, watching and smiling to himself. Although I didn't remember that much about him at the time, I could only describe him as a strong and muscular man with an ominous air about him. Anyways, hour after hour, this man would sit on the steps of our apartment and try to play with me. Being overprotective as she was, my mom would take me back inside and not let me go back until he left. This kept happening more and more, and finally, it died down when my brother was born. Then, it got much, much worse. Now, I was four and my brother was one. We were playing while my mom was doing laundry and I spot the guy hiding behind a bush near my neighbor's apartment. It looked like he had something hidden behind his back. We made eye contact, and I kid you not, he gave me the most devilish smile I've ever seen in my life. Instantly, I got uncomfortable and very creeped out, so I called my mom. She asked me what I wanted, and I told her the best a four-year-old could. Immediately, she dropped what she was doing, grabbed both of us, and took us inside. At first, I didn't know why she took us in, but now that I'm older, I'm grateful she did. Later that night, there was a shootout between him and the neighbors. He had a gun on his person, and ended up shooting a member from a rival gang and escaping. Fast forward nine years later, I came across an article from our local newspaper about a guy who'd been sentenced to life without parole for gunning down a rival gang member. 
The second my mom saw the article, she explained it's the guy who used to watch me when I was younger. Apparently, he's from a local gang and used to be in and out of prison. That alone was enough for me to get my heart pumping. So, guy who used to watch me as a kid? Let's never ever meet again.